Welcome back. In the previous video, I covered about fundamentals of entity authentication. Now, in this video, we will discuss about applications of entity authentications. So, entity authentication is to, to prove the identity, how to use the authentic, how to claim your authentic, authentication, for that you require the entities. So, such type of the things what we call, we call as the entity authentication. So, what are the applications of this entity authentication? Let's see. One is access control. If you want to access physical or virtual resources, before accessing that, you have to control. So, how you control? By the help of or with the help of the entity authentication. For example, if you want to access any resource, before accessing that, you have to prove that you are the authenticated users. How will prove? By providing the password here. Okay. So, now if you are provide the your user information along with the password, then it proves that you are the authenticated users and you have the authority to access those resource. That resource may be physical or the virtual resource here. And also in the access control, that resource you can also use for two purpose. One is to, one, one is to, to read. Okay. What are the resources are available? Those resources just you can view. Another one is what? You have the authority to modify those resources or you can add the additional resource also. So, that is based on what? Based on your authentication. Okay. So, this is one application. Another one is as a part of a more complex cryptographic process. So, cryptographic process as you know that here you are using the encryption algorithm. For that you are providing the security with the help of the encryption key. So, that encryption algorithm is the complex encryption process here. So, and what are the key you are using though? That key is also very complicated key. You are not using the simple key here. You will generate the comple complex key and with the help of the complex encryption algorithm, you are providing the security. So, in that, you can also take this entity authentication as a part here. This entity authentication is to prove that I have the authentication to use that encryption key or to use that particular encryption algorithm. Okay, so how we will prove that? That is very simple thing here. So, before establishing the connection, first you have to prove that I am the genuine user. So, for that you can use the nouns or you can use the ID, all those things. Okay, those passwords, ID. Okay, our nouns are what here, what those are things only we call as an entity authentication here. So, to prove that I am the authorized user and I have the authority to make communication with the another user here. So, that is also one of the application of entity authentication. Is it clear now? Next is general categories of identification information. So, how we will prove that identification of the informations? One of the way is the dump tokens here. Dump tokens is that you are hanged a plastic card and for that plastic part contain the magnetic strip. So, with the help of that magnetic strip, yes, I will identify that that person or is the uh, genuine user here. Okay, so that is what we call as a dump tokens here. Next one is the smart cards. Smart card is also a plastic card, but instead of magnetic tips, so strips, here it uses what? It uses the smart cards here. So, magnetic chips here. Okay, here you are using the magnetic strips and here you are using the magnetic chip and that chip contain informations related to identify that that will user is the genuine user or authenticated user. Smart tokens. Smart tokens are the same as the smart cards but along with the user information here the smart tokens has to use some cryptographic techniques here. Either they can generate their nouns with the help of the random generator or they can use the key scheduling algorithm to take the or to get the keys here. So, that is what we call as a smart tokens here. So, these are the some categories to prove the identification of the information. Some more is there. So, that is the claimant can use the biometrics also to prove the identification. So, in the biometrics also you are using the two types. One is static and another one, another one is the dynamic. Static it is unchanging features. 
so it may be fingerprints hand geometry face structure retina or iris pattern dynamic is it is major features that change each time okay so behavior based on the human being behavior that may be changes so the measurements may be your voice writing keyboard response times all these things may be changes here so these features what we call we call as a dynamic features okay so these are the features also you can use to prove the identification next the something the claimant knows here so one thing is what identity information so first you have to use the identity information so that identity information to prove the identification or to claim the authentication it may includes okay identification may include what here pins password or fast phrases here so first i'll start with the passwords so passwords as you know that if you go for any of the online communication first thing is what it may be any website or any apps if you want to use first compulsory how to enter your password with the help of the password only it is possible to make the communication and that password proves that you are the genuine user and you have the authority to use or you have the authentication to use that particular website as a resource or use that particular app as a resource here okay so but you whenever use the password so for passwords also you hang the some of the problems so problems with passwords are length okay so usually if you are make want to use any website first you have to register for that particular website or for that particular app here so there first it asks what it is you have while making registration you have to enter your password while entering the password so if you are see minimum minimum 6 characters minimum 10 characters why they you specify the length here if your length okay password is big then it is okay hang the good security for that particular password here so if i take only 3 to 4 character length of the password is 3 or 4 characters 3 or 4 digits then anyone can easily guess what is your password here to provide or strengthen your password length is very important so length of the password if it is big it is a good strength for that particular password means what it is highly impossible to guess the password if your length is big if your password length is small then it can be easily guessed by the other person next one is the complexity so if you are enter the password one more thing is there so when you are enter you will get the instruction what it is that is one lower case sorry one upper case letter and num okay one digit and one special case why to provide the complexity if you are uh, use the password if it is simple so then also others can easily guess what is your password to prevent from that complexity is also very important okay highly complex password if you are keep okay if you are keep to to prove your authentication then it is and a high security a simple password as you can easily remember but thing is what it can also easily recognize or okay guess by the others also so complex password is also very important that's why whenever you enter the password no you will get the okay instruction is what one lower case, one upper case and one special case and one digit is compulsory to provide the complexity here next is repeatability repeatability is very important usually what we we, we all do is what once if you keep the password we'll keep as it is we not change that password frequently so that is also bad habit so twi okay twice in a month or twice in a okay here you make the habit of changing the password here because if you are not change no so you are giving the more chance to others to guess your password okay so repeatability is what it is how long you are keep the same password so based on that that can be you are giving chance to others to guess here so that's why frequently how to change your password that is the good habit here and vulnerability vulnerability is what usually okay if i take the any one usually what is the thing you will do if you are while keeping the password either you keep your okay 
birth date, your favorite name, or favorite okay, hero, heroines, movies, or okay, name, your name related part, or birthday related part. Like this, you will keep the your password, but that is not the correct way. So that is vulnerable because everyone, whoever friends of your, they all know your birthday and they all know your what is the pet of favorite of yours and what is the okay repeatable or favorite for you and what are the things they can easily guess okay such type of the, the information also don't take, keep as it is your password usually that is our bad habit to remember for us we'll keep the password by taking the our birth date our nicknames like that but that is also not a good habit here so that is vulnerable to the others to guess what is your password here so this is the one way to prove that I am the authenticated user. So for that you can go for using the password. But while using the password these are the problems are there. So you have to look according to these problems and to overcome these problems. What is the thing you have to do? You have to keep the password in such a way that length must be big and complexity must be more and frequently how to change your password and never use your personal information related thing as a password here okay is it clear now okay thank you